As night falls, loud wails and cries echo through the dark, narrow alleyways in Edinburgh's Old Town. The streets fall silent until an ominous tapping of a wooden staff hitting the cobbled streets breaks the silence. The shadow of a tall, dark figure holding a long staff inches closer around the bend of Victoria Street in Edinburgh. This sinister-looking man is Thomas Weir, now better known as the Wizard of Westbow. It was 1599, and Thomas Weir is born into a family of wealthy landowners. The great Scottish witch hunt was running rampant throughout the country as King James VI was ruling Scotland. The medieval defense walls, which were built in 1560, surrounded Edinburgh's old town. The streets were overcrowded, and Edinburgh's buildings were built so high that those below lived in almost constant darkness and squalor. The narrow streets, filled with merchants in the day, was filled with the stench of the chamber pots that are thrown into the streets every night. The plague was still 46 years away, but Edinburgh's streets were a dark and grimy place. In 1625, King James died, leaving the throne to his son, King Charles I. Shortly after, Thomas Weir moved to Edinburgh because his family lost all of their lands. He married Lady Jean Somerville, the widow of a merchant Burgess. A Burgess was someone who could trade or set up shop in Edinburgh. Through this marriage, Thomas was able to climb the social ladder quickly and became a part of the important people in town. Thomas Weir was very respected by the people of Edinburgh. He was very religious and had an outstanding reputation. During his time in Edinburgh, Thomas was a part of the Presbyterian Covenanters group. This was a religious and political movement that supported the Presbyterian Church in Scotland. The Covenanters' war began at King Charles's hands, and Thomas decided to join the army and go to war to fight for his religion. He was a devout religious Covenanter soldier, he fought in the War of the Three Kingdoms, which took him to England and Ireland. The war came to Scotland in the 1650s, which is when Thomas Weir became a town guard, a major, protecting the citizens of Edinburgh. Ultimately, King Charles banished the Covenanters from practicing their religion, and they took their cause underground. People who were a part of the Presbyterian religion had to practice illegally, but the group would often reach out to Thomas Weir to pray with them. Thomas was known as having the gift of prayer, which meant that God was speaking straight to him. He had a very powerful connection to God through his prayers. So what changed? Why does he have this legacy of being known as the Wizard of Westbow? Thomas fell ill in 1669, one year before he was executed. Why would such an upstanding person in society wind up being executed for crimes? Thomas Weir was a wizard. On his deathbed, Thomas decided to tell the truth behind his life. He was working alongside the devil. He implicated his sister, Jean Weir, and said they would take a fiery carriage to Dalkeith, where they would fornicate with the devil and partake in acts of incest, bestiality, and adultery. He was often heard wailing in the night, which back in the 17th century was normal for those concerned with going to hell. People from his religious group would beg him to repent his sins. Thomas refused. 
the people of Edinburgh thought he had gone mad and decided to ask his sister, Jean, to confirm his stories. Jean shockingly confirmed that they had engaged in incest and that not only had Thomas gave himself to the devil, but that his satanic powers came from the large wooden staff that he carried with him around town. It was with these confirmations that cemented the executions of both Thomas and Jean Weir. Both were said to be executed by hanging due to witchcraft in 1670. Once both of the Weirs were hanged, people started reporting ghostly sightings and sounds coming from the former dwellings of Thomas Weir in the night. Anyone who lived in Thomas's house had terrifying visions of devils and ghosts. Apparitions, including a devilish-looking calf, tormented the last known residents. People would hear the ghostly wails and howls throughout the night, followed by the menacing tapping of a wooden staff. His former home was demolished in 1830. It has been rebuilt and is now home to the Quaker Meeting House on the Upper Bow. The building is known for being one of Edinburgh's most haunted places. There are still some foundation stones left over from Major Thomas Weir's former house and the spectral sightings are still alive and well. You may stop by Thomas Weir's house if you take a ghost tour in Edinburgh. People can still hear the screams after midnight echoing down Victoria Street. People say that they see the fiery carriage or the headless calf in the darkness of Westbow. Some people also claim to have seen the Wizard of Westbow's walking stick floating in the air to only disappear just as they approach it. The spooky story of the Wizard of Westbow is now a part of Edinburgh's dark history. But a lot of the time the real dark truths are glossed over or left out. The real truth about Thomas Weir is that he accused himself of these acts during the last year of his life. Not only that, he dragged his sister down with him. Unfortunately for Jean Weir, she is casually mentioned as partaking in the act of incest with Thomas Weir. And that's it. Her story isn't really told as it should be. Jean Weir was a victim of Thomas Weir. Although he presented himself as this outstanding, devoted, religious man, much of his life was spent sexually assaulting his sister as well as children. Thomas Weir wasn't consorting with the devil. He was just an evil man parading around as a pious man who was respected by the people that didn't know his dark truth. He ended up physically assaulting his sister when she was 16. He was 20 years her senior and held a lot of power over her. He ended up destroying her life and her reputation in society. Back in the 17th century, men held absolute authority. So if a woman suffered at the hands of a man, she was unable to admit to being a victim. Instead, women are seen as the ones who allowed this to happen to them. Women were vilified if they spoke the truth. So, when the authorities went to her to discuss Thomas's claims, she confessed that they were true because he did take advantage of her throughout her life. Unfortunately, she was charged with witchcraft and more than likely tortured into confessing the insane claims that Thomas was associated with the devil. If you listen to my podcast about witchcraft history in Scotland, you might know that accused witches were sleep deprived until they started to see weird things and often confess out of desperation. In the end, Jean wasn't charged with witchcraft, but she was still charged with crimes of incest. She was hanged in the grass market in Edinburgh. Even though he is now known as the Wizard of Westbow, Thomas was never accused of witchcraft. He ended up being burned alive with his staff at Gallo Lee, which means Gallows Field, in what is now Pellerig Street in Leith. He was charged with incest, bestiality, and adultery. Over the years, true stories get twisted and creepier stories take the place of real history. Thomas Weir will forever be known as the Wizard of Westbow, the once religious and respected man who was anything but. And that's it. Thank you so much for listening to Everything is Spooky in the Dark. 
I'm Crystal, and this is the podcast for WanderingCrystal.com. If you want to know more about the spooky and dark history in Edinburgh, Scotland, be sure to visit me on the blog. Bye!